coming in another movie for you guys. Now this movie review, and this is a movie that I honestly was really looking forward to seeing. I know a lot of people uh, were not looking forward to this movie, and that's completely understandable. And that movie is none other than Assassin's Creed. Now, let's talk about this movie, because... I genuinely was looking forward to this movie. I know that there have been so many countless bad video game films, but because of the cast and the plots and just everything going on with this movie, and especially the fact it was being released in December, I had a lot of faith in this one. I felt like this could be the one. This could finally be the one to pull through. This could finally be the one that could be a genuinely great movie. And unfortunately, I will say that Assassin's Creed is just a smidge better than some of the really horrible video game films, but it's still not a good movie. Assassin's Creed is a very sluggishly, um, very boring film filled with tons of missed opportunities that does present some very interesting ideas, but never really banks on them in the way that it should. And let's just get to the plot of Assassin's Creed, because that's the thing that had me interested in this movie. I thought the plot sounded genuinely quite interesting, and I thought that they really could do a good job with it, especially because the main character of this movie is written for the film. Callum Lynch is our main character, played by Michael Fosbender, and he's completely a blank slate. He's told very early on the film that he is completely erased, that he no longer exists in the world, and he's rescued to basically be, he's, you know, playing on being executed and everything, and he goes to uh, Abstergo Industries, where they save him, basically, and learns they're searching for this thing called the Apple of Eden, which essentially is going to end all sort of violence in um, in the world, basically, and the way that they're going to do that is he is going to go back in the past and have the memories of Aguilar de Nera, who is an assassin, and basically by going into the past and trying to live the life he's somehow going to end um, violence, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but that's the basic plot of Assassin's Creed overall. But let's just get into this movie starting off with the cast. Because that's the thing that I thought was looking really good here. The cast here uh, is genuinely very good. I really thought that they were all going to do a good job. And I will say, the acting here is not that bad. I really don't think that they did that bad of a job. Let's talk about Michael Fosbender Because, in my opinion, the dude cannot give a bad performance. He's one of the best actors working today. Every movie he does, he gives it his all. And while I think he really does try here as Callum Lynch, the problem is he just doesn't have a ton to work with. Like I said, this is a character who has a very very blank slate, who doesn't remember a ton of stuff, who really doesn't know where he's gonna go, and it comes across as very, very kind of boring. I mean, this is a very one-dimensional character that's really not that interesting, and they try to give him character mode, I don't want to say they don't try, they definitely do try to give it to him, but it's very, very sporadic throughout the film, and Fosbender, I think, does do a good job. He just doesn't really have a ton to work with. Like, there's this one scene where he's kind of freaking out, and you can tell that him going back in the past, the weight that it's having on him, he does do a good job of that. You can tell that this definitely is very much affecting him, that he really doesn't want to do this, but he's kind of forced to, and he did do a good job what he had, he just doesn't really have a ton to work with, and I thought that he was good in the role, he just wasn't really, he just didn't really, like I said, have a ton to work with, but then when he was Aguilar De Nera in the past, I thought he definitely did have some good stuff to work with, I thought he did a good job as a character. Again, very flat though, there really wasn't much going on with that character, I didn't feel like Fosbender was fully into the role. I could definitely feel like he was more into the role as Callum than he was as the other. And it makes sense because there's only about maybe 20 minutes of screen time from Aguilar. He really doesn't have too much to do in this movie. You see him more as Callum, and they're both really not that interesting characters. Aguilar does definitely have the more interesting stuff, but in general, this is definitely one of Fosbender's weaker performances, which really does suck, because he seemed like a thing that was really going to anchor this film, and when he's not as good in the movie, you kind of the rest of the movie kind of is crumbling because of him. Surprisingly, the best actor in the movie is not Michael Fosbender. It's actually Marion uh, Cotillard. I thought she actually did a really good job in this movie as a character of Sophia, who has a extremely predictable arc very early on in the film. I don't want to say too much of what's going on with her, uh, but she essentially is there to try to help uh, the main villain in this movie, and she does a good job for the most part, but her character development, again, very stagnant. They don't really focus on her at all. 
ton, and they try to give her stuff to do, but it just is kind of there to give her character development, and I really didn't think that she was that great in the film either, so I really don't have much to say about her. I don't think she was bad, I just felt like, between the two, definitely she's the better one, I definitely will say that, but again, she just didn't really have much to work with. And then Jeremy Irons is the villain, Alan Rickon. Here's the thing, I think he did do a good job in the movie. Uh, I think, you know, Jeremy Irons, he did his Jeremy Irons thing. Jeremy Irons, at this point, every performance he does, he definitely does a good job with. The problem is, that this character he's playing of Rickon has a goal that really, when you think about it, makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, this is someone who wants to completely eradicate the world of violence. He doesn't want any violence in the world. So how is going back in time to be an assassin prevent violence from the world? It just doesn't really make much sense to them. The motive is very unclear with what he really wants to do, why he wants to do this, how this is really going to help. It's really not explained, and because that, as good as Jeremy Irons is, it becomes across as very flat when they don't really develop his characters. And that's really the problem with this movie, is that while they try to develop these characters, and while they do give good performances, even Michael K. Williams, I thought, was pretty good in this movie, they just don't really give necessary character development for us to care about these characters. So, the acting, I thought, was definitely the best thing about the movie. Now, let's get to the directing and the screenplay, because, wow, is this movie a mess. And that's the best way to describe it. This movie is a mess. It really is. I mean... Justin Kersall, who directed this movie, I thought did do a good job with the tone. Definitely, there was definitely a good tone throughout this film. Uh, like, it's, you know, definitely a very dark film. You definitely do get that sense. It's an adventure film sometimes, and then sometimes it'll go in the future. I thought the tone was well executed. The problem is the movie doesn't really know what it wants to be. Does it want to focus on the past, or does it want to focus on the present? The movie can't really tell, and it kind of just seemed like the movie was kind of just doing things as it went along, and the directing really did not work there. But let's get to the screenplay because that's where most of my issues with this movie come in. And it's not because the screenplay is necessarily one of the worst things ever. It's because the stuff in here is really, really interesting. I mean, this whole idea of wanting to rid the world of violence and make sure that violence is, you know, eradicated from the world, I think is overall a very interesting concept. The problem is the movie never really takes the time to focus on it. It talks about it and then it just kind of goes away. You know that that's what's going on, but the movie doesn't really give you a ton to work with. There are a couple exposition scenes that I really feel the movie would have benefited a little bit more from if we did have more exposition scenes because I want to know more of what's going on. I want to know what, you know, the motive is and why this is all happening, but the movie never really gets into that. And some people can make the argument that, oh, this is a first movie that they're going to make more movies and that they're going to, they're trying to save room for the other films. But this is basic knowledge that is, in, you know, in order for me to enjoy this film, or in order for me to understand what the hell is going on, I kind of need to know why they want to rid the world of violence. And they never explain this movie. They never explain how this is going to work. And it completely just falls flat because of that. And I really thought that that didn't work at all. So that in general is a, is a huge flaw I definitely have with this movie. The other problem is the movie does not know how to focus on these characters because, yes, they do give them character development, but like I said, it's very, very stagnant. Uh, there's this scene where Marion Cotillard, you know, she goes to... Callum, and she tries to tell him of something that happened with her to try to, like, bond these two together, because you can tell they're trying to get these two to have something that bonds them together, and have something that makes them very similar, but it just doesn't work, because immediately they don't talk about it after that. It just kind of is there, and then it goes away, and none of it really works out in the way that it should. I felt the character moment just wasn't really there, because the movie instead wants to focus on this story that it really is very half-assed, and really doesn't really know what to do with, in my opinion. And the general conflict of Callum in general, again, didn't really make much sense to me. Why was Callum chosen? Why is uh, chosen? Why is he the guy to be a Gwyler? How does he have all these memories? That stuff the movie doesn't really, you know, make sense of. I mean, throughout the movie, we get the knowledge that he goes into, like, this pod where he then takes on the life of a Gwylar, and it's kind of like a simulator where he's doing all this stuff in the present, but, like, they don't really understand make sense of how this is all working out. Like, how is he really doing all this? And why does he, you know, how, how does he keep doing this? It just doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. And that, again, really did take me out of the movie. 
I have to say. They really didn't do a ton with that, and that really didn't work. And like I said, the whole thing of him being in the past is not really shown that much in the movie. It's talked about, but the movie doesn't really take the time to show it. And I thought that that definitely, again, very much detracted from the story. I didn't really think that worked in the way that they wanted to, but... Like I said, there are some very interesting elements in there that I think could have really been well executed, but unfortunately, they're just not because the movie doesn't really focus on them in the way it should. Now, the cinematography in this movie, a lot of people have been commending the action and saying that the action's really well done and that there's really good action in this movie. I'm not quite sure what they're talking about because the action in this movie is extremely rushed, is extremely messy, and is the exact way of not to film action. I mean, there's so much slow-mo in this movie. There's so many jump cuts in these action scenes. Scenes. There's so much shaky cam in these action scenes that it's even, it's hard to get into them really. I mean, it really is because they last maybe like five minutes and then they'll go back to the story and I really could not get into these action scenes. I have to say like definitely I did feel some tension in the beginning of the movie, but most of the action scenes were kind of just there. Like I watched them, they were a thing and they're really not memorable at all, especially the final battle in this movie. I can't even tell you how the final battle played out because it just isn't memorable, I have to say. And that's something else that really does uh, weigh the movie down is in terms of the action scenes. This is a film that's supposed to have tons of action. It's supposed to have, you know, these really compelling things to it. And it just doesn't work when the movie really does not focus on it. And I thought the cinematography really didn't work in that regard. The score here I thought was pretty good. I definitely thought the score was okay. Uh, definitely better than some of the other video game scores. I definitely will say they did a good job with the score overall. The editing here as well, I thought was definitely a big problem. Uh, I thought the movie could have easily been a little bit shorter. It didn't need to be nearly as long as it was. There are a lot of very repetitive scenes, in my opinion, of Callum and his father, and it's really not explored that much till the third act of this movie, and by then, you just kind of stop caring. Like, you don't really care as much about these characters, because they don't really give you a reason to care about them till like, the third act of this movie, and that, again, didn't really work. However, the one thing I think that actually weighs this movie down is not an issue with any of those things. It's actually an issue with the rating. The fact this movie is PG-13 just baffles me. I have no idea why they decided to make this movie PG-13. I mean, the games are M. Uh, the, you know, the, the trailers were very, very graphic and violent, and it made it seem like this really was going to be a, you know, hard R, and for some reason it's PG-13, and it really does ruin a ton of the film. In my eyes, there is a version of this film that was supposed to be rated R, but either the director or Fox or something like that was keeping this movie, um, from being, you know, uh, from being PG, from being R, and I don't really understand why that doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. I don't know why they decided to keep this movie uh, PG-13. It did not need to be PG-13. Nothing about this movie felt PG-13. It felt like they only gave it a PG-13 because they wanted to keep it safe and they wanted money, and that really does ruin a ton of most of the action in the film. So overall, guys, Assassin's Creed is not a good movie. I don't think it's as bad as everyone has been saying it is. I just feel it's a movie filled with missed opportunities. It's a movie that has some characters that could have been really compelling. It has a very interesting story. It has some interesting visuals, but the movie just didn't know what to do with it, and once it started things, it kind of just goes away from it. Like I said, it kind of just felt like they were making things as they went along, and that really does not work for this movie at all. I really don't think they did a good job with the character development and things like that, and especially the ending of this movie. One of the most desperate attempts, I think, for a sequel in a long time, and I don't think this movie's getting a sequel, and I don't think it's done pretty well at the box office. I don't think that a lot of people want to see this movie this week, and I don't think a lot of people are going to watch this movie again, because one's a video game film, and two, it's, you know, not that great of a film, and it really is unfortunate, because it really does waste the talents of so many of its main cast, and its directors, and its writers, I mean, it could have been so much more, but unfortunately, as it is, Assassin's Creed is just another uh, bad video game film to the very long list of bad video game films, and I am overall going to give Assassin's Creed a 2 out of 5, or a D plus. Like I said, I don't think this is as bad as everyone says is. It's just a film filled with missed opportunities. It basically completely just uh, strives away from any sort of um, character development it could have. It doesn't really focus on the content that much. It, fo it focuses instead on very, very poorly done action scenes that are really not that impressive. And after this movie, I'm really not sure if a good video game movie is something that we can ever really have. 
So over guys, my review of Assassin's Creed. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie overall. Love to your thoughts on it. Uh, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for another movie review, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.